You've got to have an actual yoga in your life. This, I'm only speaking scholarship of Krishnamacharya. There must be a yoga to actualize the ideals of human wisdom culture. And he was quite emphatic about that. Yoga is not something that Hindus do. Yoga is not religion. It is, yoga is for all people of all cultures, all faiths. Though I were just in the Middle East world, and there we have Arab women and Jewish women with quite different nationalities and different uh, you know, religious cultures and languages. It's so obvious that there is one human family, there's one life on earth, and we all breathe and we all love and we all have families, you know. We're all trying to survive on Mother Earth. And this hideous differentiation that I am different from you because you have a different religion or a different nation or a different race, that hideousness that we all have to get over, we have to work out how to do this now as a human species. You know, we have to work out how to survive on this God-given earth that we're on. And I am totally convinced that it must happen at a grassroots level. We must give yoga to all people everywhere. That each person everywhere, no matter whether they're, you know, Islamic or, or Jewish or Christian or atheist, whoever they are, if they move and breathe and do a yoga that's right for them, they feel connected to reality itself, life itself. And this is, this is we have a non-profit called the Heart of Yoga Foundation. I was just a Krupalu teaching people from impoverished urban America, you know, mainly black women. And my foundation, Urban Family Foundation was sponsored. They came to Krupalu. They would never have got there without the sponsorship of some Silicon Valley money. And it was so beautiful to see these women of all ages and body types and body sizes do their yoga practice just like I'm going to teach you and go, wow, I can do yoga. Yoga's not just something that thin white women from LA do. <laughs> I can do yoga. And that really, real yoga, I have one of these advanced yoga for perfect beginners. Perfect. You are perfect as life itself, as this universe, you are perfect. There's a yoga that fits you exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's a yoga that fits people from any geography, any culture, any language group, anywhere in the world. Yoga is not religion. It doesn't belong to India. It doesn't belong to Hinduism. It's a separate philosophical system that has been used in the ancient world by all religious groups as their practical means to actualize the their ideals of their faith. And this is what's happening in the modern world. And we're on a roll here. We're doing it. We're getting this information out into the world. And if any of you want to help us do that, please jump on it. And that is giving skills of real yoga for real people in all demographics, including deprived, financially and emotionally deprived urban America. And that's millions of people. and emotionally and financially deprived people of the Middle East and Africa, anywhere and everywhere. And to, to get out of this, you know, the gymnastic cult of how yoga has been popularized in America to actual yoga practice. That is that there's a right yoga for every person, no matter who the person is, that is your direct intimacy with reality itself, direct not a pathway to, not getting better and better, not a boring self-improvement program on yourself, but direct embrace of reality itself, the power of this cosmos that beats the heart and moves the breath and sex, that power. Right? This is what I give you today. So I want you to take it on and do it for 40 days till you're quite comfortable with it, you know, you slip into it like your favorite pair of jeans. You just know it, you know, like you take a bath, do you have a shower, brush your teeth, do your yoga every day. No drama, no question, just do your yoga. 
You know, you don't congratulate yourself when you shout every day for seven days. You don't go, wow, shout every day for seven days. I'm so cool. You don't do that. And you don't beat yourself up if you don't take a shower. You just do it the next day. So this is how yoga must fit into your life like this. And I'm asking you to do that and then show your nearest and dearest. Become teachers. Show a few friends, family members. Show them how to do this. So I'm about to show you. So you become a community. And let people understand that no matter who they are, they might have rejected the spiritual ideas for the sort of valid reasons of their own. Rejected religion for very good reasons. You know, build a case for becoming an atheist or an agnostic. Very good case because of the madness of religion. And those people too need a yoga practice. They want to feel better and feel better. So, I just want to make a point that Krishnamacharya, this gentleman that Desikachar brought through in his book, The Heart of Yoga, Krishnamacharya is the teacher of all the teachers. He is the teacher to Mr. Ayenga, who died not long ago himself. He was the teacher of Patavi Joyce, who also died. Being the teacher of the teachers, I just want to tell you emphatically that Krishnamacharya is your teacher. If you're involved at all in modern day studio yoga, your guru is Krishnamacharya. So you're meeting your guru today through me. Here is the teachings of Krishnamacharya. Krishnamacharya, there's a right yoga for every person, no matter who the person is. You must respect the body type, the age and the health and the cultural background of that person. Respect it and adapt the yoga to their needs. Not one size fits all. Pushing, see these black women, with their, you know, some of them, you know, big bodies, you know, naturally big women, trying to push themselves with these sort of muscular ideas of asana attainment. Please, it's so sad to see that. This gymnastic struggle trying to get to some ideal that's been imposed upon them by some glossy magazine or something. This is not it. No more pushing, no more trying to get somewhere as if you're not somewhere, as if you're not already the wonder of reality itself. And this yoga is merely to participate in the given reality, the power of this cosmos that is beating your heart and moving your breath and sex, it is participation in that which you are. It's not trying to get somewhere. It's not trying to put yourself in any mold of gymnastic attainment or spiritual attainment either. Right? It's not. Because everybody here is the perfect wonder of reality. Already. Let's just test it out. Let's choose a random person, a random person. Who should it be? This random person here. This random person sitting there, I want to ask you a serious question. Is that the power of the cosmos sitting there just as she is without yoga or meditation or religion? Is that the power of the cosmos sitting there? Yes or no? Yes. 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 It is a power. What could create that? I ask you. And when you came out of your mother's womb, you were like, oh, oh. where did she come from? My God, how could it be? Right? And it's just as true this many years later, isn't it? But, oh my God, how could it be? What sustains you? What beats your heart and moves your breath and sex? That's the question we don't ask. And we get involved in struggle to do our asana right or do our meditation right. You know, try to, you, we miss this basic point. If she is the power of the cosmos, are you the power of the cosmos? You. Yes or no? Suppose. Did you say suppose? What? Yes. Well, it needs to be a yes. It, it needs to be thought through. No, really, these are serious questions I ask you. I'm, I'm asking you to consider it very seriously. Like a maths teacher made you understand what nine times nine is. Do you know what nine times nine is? 
How do you know that shit? <laughs> nine times nine, 81. What? See, how do you know that? Because you had good caring teachers that drilled it into you. What's six times six? See, you just know. See, and I want you to know this fact that I just, this, and I say you're the power of the cosmos. That is a fact. It's not some bullshit spiritual affirmation seller best-selling book. <laughs> It's a fact. It's not a piece of poetry. It's not a roomy kind of, oh, you're the power of the cosmos. You're... It's not that. It's a fact. And it's a fact of you, too. I don't want you to say, I suppose so. I want you to dwell on it like a mathematics teacher won't let you leave the room because he knows, she knows, that you can't survive in the society unless you know these facts. I'm telling you, you can't survive in this world unless you know the fact that you are the power of this cosmos presently arising. You are. Is she? Yes. yes. She is it. Like, please, let's stop bullshitting ourselves and giving her spiritual programs and meditation and <laughs> trying to, you know, realize something. You are it. Trying to realize it is the problem that proposes its absence. This whole spiritual world, religious world, yoga world, is proposing something that it hasn't happened. And that you're trying to, you know, like if my teacher would just say, the great Yuji Krishnamurti, so if you're looking for something, it implies that you don't have what you're looking for, otherwise you wouldn't be looking for it. So he said, the looking is the problem. He say, stop looking, start living. That's what he said. Enjoy your life. You're here to enjoy yourself, the power of this cosmos. Please don't look for it, you are it. But we have to mathematically think it through very seriously, like our maths teachers made us think it through. And I'm asking you today, think it through, please. Everybody I'm saying, are you the power of this cosmos presently arising? Yes or no? And it is a yes or no. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. And back to her, is this power arising as a pure intelligence in her case how her body is functioning the heart beating the hair growing the eyes perceiving the ears perceiving is that a pure intelligence that sits there yes or no yes it is your body i mean the flesh the life is a pure intelligence beyond beyond scientific understanding just this body as it is right now good i'm glad we got that established so the power of the cosmos is arising as a pure intelligence. Is that correct? Is that just her or is that, is that everybody? <laughs> is there anybody who's not at one with life here? No. <laughs> not before either. But see, this is important to think this through. Not a spiritual statement. I'm not trying to be clever. It's a fact. One more thing, is the power of the cosmos arising as beauty over there? Yes or no? Yes. Is yes. that beauty? Yes. It is the beauty. Now I, I could say, you're a beautiful woman, put you on the cover of Yoga Journal or Vogue magazine. And that, true enough to be said, but I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. This is so actually vulgar and insidious what's been put on women, the idea of beauty. You know, media made up ideas of beauty that we all try to conform to. And all the women are trying to be beautiful. And the men can't feel anything unless a woman is that media image of beauty. It's so vulgar and problematic. So I'm not saying she's a beautiful woman, but it could be said. I'm saying she is the beauty. You are the beauty. I was just in Germany with Elle magazine, with some, the editor of Elle's become a student, huge magazine. And she's saying, she's trying to steer the ship around of selling a conventional idea of beauty to women, to sell magazines, to selling the understanding of real beauty. All people, all people are the beauty of existence. Right? And to know that you are the beauty 
I mean, the be- you know, everything in the natural world being the beauty. Look at a leaf, look at a tree, look at a cloud, look at the sunlight on the water. You know what I'm talking about. That beauty is your beauty. You are the beauty. You are the beauty. And when you look at the beauty of nature, it is beauty looking at beauty. It is nature that looks at nature. You are that. And that's a fact. This consciousness that can look through your perceivers into the beauty of Mother Nature is beauty itself. And I, I'm asking that you rest in that understanding. You rest in that understanding. You stop looking. You stop looking even to capture beauty because you don't have to capture beauty. You are the beauty. My teacher would say the mind is so slow it can never capture beauty that we commit ourselves to trying to capture it. That's what conventional art is about, trying to capture it and hold it. You don't have to do You are the beauty and you look at beauty. It's just that you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You've experienced it. Are you alright with that? You are the beauty looking at beauty. Please, so relax. Have your life. Enjoy your life. So I had one guru who was saying that you are here to enjoy yourself. It's a high spiritual teaching. Actually, in that statement, you are here to enjoy yourself. Life itself. The beauty is arising. The power of this cosmos is arising as pure intelligence and beauty in your case. Isn't it? And you don't have to get to it because you are it. The getting to it implies its absence, trying to get to it. You don't have to get to it. And we have vast empires of religious persuasion and yoga persuasion trying to persuade the public to do these arbitrary disciplines to get to it. There is no getting to it. The getting to it, trying to get to it, implies its absence from you. And it, You understand what I'm saying? Yes. There I'm with it. Yes. And now my, my teacher says, and now yoga begins. Now. As your participation in this that you are, that's what it is. Now yoga begins. In the given reality. And this is what I teach you. And I want you to dwell on these three questions I just gave you. And practice each day your yoga, not just any yoga, but your yoga, your polarity of inhale with exhale, strength with receptivity, the union of the male-female qualities in your own embodiment, which is another whole story. Asana, yoga, is the union of opposites in your own system. It is the union of male and female qualities in your own embodiment. That's what it is. It's always been what it is. But we're popularized all around America, just male, 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 male attainment, gymnastic effort towards a future result. And then as a counterbalance to that, we've got yin yoga going. We're also yinning out trying as a counterbalance to all that yang. <laughs> yeah? But asana, uh, yoga correctly done is yin yang, the participation in both polarities. And that, that is life itself, perfect participation. You know, like a tree has a strong trunk and you've got, you know, male ascending, you get to the soft foliage, utterly soft, utterly receptive, you know, feminine. It is one system. Without the trunk, there'd be no foliage. Without the receptive foliage, the trunk would wither. This is us. This is who we are. We're withering under all that male effort. We must receive become receptive through the crown and frontal line. And I show you that, how to do asana for yourself properly today. I'll show it to you. I kid you not. No bullshit here. I didn't make this up in LA 20 years ago. I really didn't. It came from Krishnamacharya. So this is your direct intimacy, embrace, of your own reality of strength that is receiving for yourself on a daily basis. This is your participation in the power of this cosmos 
that is arising as a pure intelligence and utter beauty in your case. And thank you for promising me that you'll do it for 10 minutes a day. I told you this is a very auspicious meeting. It's meant to happen between you and me. We've been waiting years for this meeting. <laughs> Finally, we've pulled it off. Finally. <laughs> so you're getting this on camera? You're gonna please make a big video and get millions and millions of people to watch this video. <laughs> please. Okay. Yoga is not religion but it is the practical means by which you actualize the beautiful ideas in human culture, in all cultures, all geographies, all times, all language groups, all human beings have come across this wisdom of their own embrace of reality, which is perfect power and peace and nurturing and intelligence and beauty. Everybody has realized this, and then they've written it down. But then priesthoods and gurus and so forth have created arbitrary power structures of these beautiful ideas and stripped the yoga from them. So you have the beautiful ideas without yoga, and it is so problematic to the human race, what that's done to us. And this yoga returns intimacy to all ordinary people. Then you embrace your life. Then you embrace the power of the cosmos, which is arising as you. Then you understand the beautiful things that were written in the great texts, like the Bible or Quran or Bhagavad Gita or Torah, you know, or the great oral traditions of indigenous culture, like from Maori people from New Zealand. They're, they're the same beauty in their understanding is this embrace of all ordinary conditions through your own yoga practice, the embrace of your own breath, and brings peace into your life and power into your life, healing into your life. If you'll actually practice, if you stop beating yourself up in these male Brahmin gymnastics in the yoga studios, and you do an actual yoga practice for yourself on a daily basis, then I promise you, it's a promise, it'll start happening for you. Okay, we've got that. <laughs> Any questions? Any uncertainties? Are we all good to go on the 40 day sadhana? Yes. Well, I love your question. Thank you, because it, what it tells me is that you're now thinking about it seriously. And we've all got to think about, you know, think about your busy lifestyle. You've probably got three kids and a job or something like, you know, it's like, do you have a place in your house that's clean and clear if you don't make a place? And so you can face that one direction every day, you know, look through a beautiful window or have a picture of your teacher or something. Have a place in your own. Some people don't even have a place, you know, their houses are full of furniture and clutter. You know, sort that out. Make a place at home and then think about your daily routine. When can you practice? And it, there is something to be said about doing your yoga in the morning because then it builds in to your daily routine the principles of yoga. You know, yoga is intimacy with body, breath and relationship in that order. That's what it is. And then you can go, okay, I'm intimate with my body, my breath, go to work and you find you're naturally intimate with your colleagues, you know like that. So there's something to be said. If you can fit it into the morning, I recommend that. Okay. Yeah, but if you can't fit it in the morning, do it somewhere. Just say, uh, you know, busy mothers and so forth, you know, fathers say, it's hard, but when, when your yoga practice is truly your daily priority, where you wouldn't dream of going through it without doing your yoga, like, you know, you'd rather miss breakfast than yoga. Or you'd rather miss taking a shower than doing a yoga practice. Get your yoga like that as a priority. I have friends like that all around the world who wouldn't dream of not doing their daily yoga. Because they know how helpful it is. So good, thank you. You're seriously thinking about it. Okay, this guy's not talking shit. I'm really going to do this. 
I want to become, I want to become a, a, benefit, a benefactor of yoga, a beneficiary of yoga. I'll do it. And we see, you have to come to that point where you say, okay, I'm going to do it. These black women in the parlors look so beautiful. Like, they, I will, I'm going to do this. You have to come to that. So think. All right, so let me do a little blessing chant that initiates you. Could everybody sit and we'll, we'll sort of start a little bit of a practice now?